Hi, I'm Hazel, and here are five ways to level that don't involve traditional questing or dungeons to kind of keep things fresh as you go. Many of these can be done at any level, but flying does help a lot for most of them, so at least for me, these were mostly a remedy for the level 60 plus blues. Number five, wild pet battles. These are very easy to do, and chances are there's a wild pet just waiting to get stomped near you. So when fighting level 21 to 22-ish pets with a team of 25s, I was getting about 6k experience per battle, which is about a third of a quest for about 45 seconds-ish of work, depending on how quickly that you stomp them. I will openly admit that on its own, this is a pretty slow method of just leveling alts, but if you're going to be battling wild pets anyways, for example to level some wild pets, then you're in business. My personal favorite wild pet leveling spot continues to be the Wormrest Temple in Northrend, and you can safely access that as low as level 60. So don't bother hunting down the level 3 bunnies when all you have are level 25s, it's not going to do you a whole lot of good. Number 4 is profession dailies, and I feel like I say this in a lot of videos, and it's probably because I really like doing it. Once again, the cooking and fishing dailies in Stormwind and Orgrimmar are very easy to do, and they can be done starting at level 10 once you train cooking and fishing, which conveniently can be done right by the quest giver. And uh, once you get flying, they go much, much faster, and those will continue to give you experience all the way leveling up, even past 80. On top of that, they'll also give you a couple of bonus points of skill in the related profession, and if you're planning on training that profession later, it probably still won't help, but you know, it feels good. You can also find profession dailies in Shatrath and Northern's Dalaran, although those ones do go slower, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend going out of your way for them. Um, and also, don't forget, if the Darkmoon Fair is up, um, you know, first of all, don't forget to get your 10% experience Darkmoon fair buff like I'm always forgetting too, but second of all, um, there are profession quests there as well. Those ones are not daily, they are a once per fair kind of thing, but those will also give you some points and they will give you some experience, and you know, you're already there, so why not? Number three is treasure hunting, and this one starts in Pandaria. So across Pandaria, there are these grey lootable treasure items that are all sparkling, and when you loot them, they give you a bunch of experience, like a big chunk of experience. I found that the experience per treasure was varying between like 24 and 35k, which is not bad for picking up a thing. You can find maps of where all the treasures are on websites sites like Wowhead, or you can get coordinates and then pop them into an add-on like TomTom Tom to get them marked on your map. Another bonus with this method is that those priceless Pandaren artifacts can be sold to a vendor near you for a healthy amount of gold, so collect the whole set and vendor them all, and you will be well on your way to saving up enough to buy yourself something pretty. Number two is Pet Battle Dailies, and I'm giving this a separate entry altogether from Wild Pet Battles because A, it works differently, and B, it is on another level of efficiency altogether when it comes to experience. So whereas with Wild Pets, if you vastly overleveled the defenseless little bunny and then crushed it, it wouldn't really do much for you. It is a different story in pet battle dailies. Pet tamers across Kalimdor and the Eastern Kingdom start at very low levels and they all give you a full quest worth of experience each, and like a healthy quest worth of experience, not one of those dumb ones that gives you half experience for no good reason. You can open up your world map and then look at pet tamer tracking to see where they are on your map, and you'll find that many of them are clumped together. So for example, as an alliance, I start my leveling day in Stormwind, do the cooking and fishing daily, and then kind of go south and hit up Westfall and then Elwyn Forest and then Dusk wood and then down south through the Stranglethorns, and by the end of all that, you know, only 20 minutes has gone by, my tea is still half warm, and I'm like 65% of the way through a level and I feel like I haven't even started yet. Once you've sorted out which of your pets are most efficient at just destroying these enemy tamers, you can save those pet teams in rematch so that the next time that you approach the tamer, you know, tomorrow, you mouse over the tamer, the team will automatically load, and this is just the fastest and most smooth and buttery thing that you have ever done, at least before your second cup of coffee. Finally, weird leveling method number one, and my personal favorite lately, that just saved me going from like 65 to 80. Archaeology. Archaeology is a really good experience. So there's eight digs in a dig site, and each one of those was giving me 4,500 experience without rested, mind you. With rested, it's twice as good. And you'll often find like groups of dig sites clumped together really quickly, and you can do them really, really quickly. If you're somebody that hasn't touched archaeology since Cataclysm, it has gotten a lot better in recent years. Um, the cast time is faster, the cooldown is faster, you get this sweet little silver shovel over your head when you're standing over the thing to clue you in, and you're also going to get more fragments per dig, as well as there being more digs per site. So all around, much more efficient and really bizarrely good experience. <laughs> I will note that I tried dig sites in Pandaria, and those gave me not nearly as much experience, so I would say that for leveling, stick to the Kalimdor and Eastern Kingdom's archaeology dig sites, because they seem to be pretty good. One other thing, and I don't think it's actually necessarily good enough on its own to really warrant a place in this list, but if you're not using any other professions while you're leveling up, and who really uses professions while they're leveling up, um, it doesn't hurt to pick up mining and herbalism. And then whenever you see a node, you can just kind of pick it. Um, the experience in that is pretty inconsistent, I found it generally corresponds to what your level is, 
is in relation to the level of the herb. I was finding at level like 80, 81 ish, I could just fly around the Jade Forest and get almost 2k experience per green tea leaf that were everywhere. So that was pretty good. But yeah, for the most part, it's really best like mixed in with other activities. So that's how I've been leveling lately. These things are generally just a nice change of pace and I find that they pair quite well with uh, stream watching when you're pairing your wow activity to your second monitor, you know. It goes nicely. It's no Karazhan trash, but that one kind of smells like an incoming hotfix to me, so I'm just gonna leave it alone myself. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye!